Don't be confused by the difference between specific heat capacity and thermal capacity. Watch this video and you'll find out the difference between the two terms. At the most basic level we can say that objects change their temperature when heat energy flows into or out of them. If heat energy flows into an object its temperature rises, if heat energy flows out of an object its temperature falls. For example if we had an object and its thermal capacity was 800 joules per celsius that would mean that if we wanted to raise its temperature by 1 degree celsius we would have to give it 800 joules of heat energy. Also, if we wanted to reduce the temperature by 1 degree Celsius, we would have to remove 800 joules of heat energy from it. The equation for thermal capacity is as follows. It equals the energy that has gone into something or out of something, energy being measured in joules, divided by the change in temperature of the object, measured in degrees Celsius or sometimes measured in Kelvin. So we've got energy divided by temperature, joules divided by Celsius, so that means the thermal capacity of an object is measured in joules per Celsius. If we wanted to write this as symbols, we could say that C for thermal capacity equals Q for the heat energy divided by delta T, capital T, referring to the change in temperature. So what's the difference between that and specific heat capacity? Well, specific heat capacity doesn't really concern itself with objects, rather it concerns itself with specific materials. Now, the specific heat capacity of material tells us how many joules of heat energy are needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram of that substance by one degree Celsius or Kelvin. The specific heat capacity of water is approximately 4,200 joules per kilogram Celsius. So what that means is, it means if we have one kilogram of water, we would need 4,200 joules to raise its temperature by one Celsius. Um, if we wanted to raise its temperature by two degrees Celsius, we would need twice that. We would need 8,400 joules of energy. The important difference between this and thermal capacity is that the mass matters here. Here we're always talking about how much energy is needed to change the temperature of one kilogram of that substance. The equation for specific heat capacity is a little more complicated than that for thermal capacity. Specific heat capacity equals the heat energy that's been put into something or taken out of something measured in joules and we divide it by the mass measured in kilograms which is multiplied by the change in temperature measured in degrees Celsius or it can also be measured in Kelvin. Now some people put this in brackets to indicate that the mass times the temperature is its own number and then you get the heat energy and divide by that number. Technically you don't need the brackets there but if that helps you to get a feel for what the equation's about feel free to use them. Specific heat capacity, well we've got joules divided by kilograms and Celsius so the units are simply joules per kilogram degree Celsius or if you're using Kelvin joules per kilogram Kelvin. Now if you want to write this equation out in symbols, we would say that C for specific heat capacity is equal to Q over M times delta T. Now don't be confused, C has been used here for specific heat capacity, it was also used for thermal capacity. That can be quite confusing, so just be very very clear when you're doing a question which it is that you're referring to. And that's it for specific heat capacity and thermal capacity. Don't forget to check out all the other videos on other topics within GCSE Physics and please also subscribe to Physics with Mr. Drew.